teach your talk in sports what it does what it do how we live in starting yesterday espn started revealing their nba rank for the 2023-24 season in which they predict who will be the top 100 players in the league this upcoming season yesterday they did numbers 51 to 100 today 11 through 50 so tomorrow we'll be doing the top 10 well in this video i'm going to name 10 of the guys i think are the biggest snubs from that list uh, 10 guys who definitely deserve a lot of consideration for the top 100, but were not included. Let's get into it. I'll name the players in alphabetic order by last name, starting with Bojan Bogdanovic of the Detroit Pistons. Bogdanovic, this past season, averaged a career-high 21.6 points. Also got to the free throw line, his most attempts per game, 5.1, shooting impressive 88.4%. Also connected on 41.1% of his threes, the fourth time in the last six seasons he shot over 40% from deep. Next, let's go with Miles Bridges of the Charlotte Hornets. Now, what Miles Bridges did off the court is absolutely horrible. Uh, if we're looking strictly on the court, though, maybe deserves a spot in the top 100. Um, I believe he suspended the first 10 games of the season, missed all of last season due to the domestic violence incident. But before that, he was probably going to get a max or near max deal from Charlotte. As in the 2021-22 season, he averaged 20.2 points, 7 rebounds, very close to being named an all-star shot, nearly 50% from the field a pretty good defensive player as well uh, bridges again if you look strictly on the court probably will be a top 100 player next let's go with malcolm brogdon now of the portland trailblazers the reigning sixth man of the year runner-up emmanuel quickly is on the list but brogdon is not um shot 44.4% from deep last season, a career best uh, for the Celtics previously with the Pacers in the previous two seasons as a starter, averaged 21.2 points and 19.1 points, uh, 5.9 assists per games in both of those seasons. An excellent free throw shooter as well, near 88% for his career. Bruce Brown, now of the Indiana Pacers, of course was the key reserve for the Denver Nuggets in their championship run last season. Not a guy who's going to put up um, crazy stats, but just one of those guys that every team wants. As a Knicks fan, we got Josh Hart. Uh, Bruce Brown is kind of like that guy as well. Um, 11 and a half points per game last season, though, was a career high. Of course, a lot of people think he did get overpaid by the Pacers, but he should have a huge role for them and definitely help uh, them win more games. Nick Claxton of the Brooklyn Nets um, had a breakout season in his fourth year in the league last season. Led the NBA in field goal percentage at 70 and a half. Also career highs 12.6 points, 9.2 rebounds, and 2.5 and blocks. Seen as one of the best defensive centers in the league. While he doesn't have much range, isn't going from a foul line, uh, definitely is con a, con a player that is conducive to winning basketball. Keegan Murray, Sacramento Kings, was the fourth pick in the 2022 NBA draft. Set an NBA record for most threes made by a rookie this past season. 12.2 points, 4.6 rebounds, shooting 41.1% from deep. Should have an even larger role in his sophomore season. Norman Powell of the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, Powell... Um, you know, was the third wheel behind George and Leonard, but they missed a bunch of games. Started just eight games last season, but averaged 17 points per game. Four straight seasons, averaging at least 16 points per game with George and Leonard out uh, during most of the first round. Uh, he averaged 21.8 points in their five-game series loss to the Clippers. Um, shot nearly 40% from three this past season. Alprin Sengwoon of the Houston Rockets. Sengwoon is one of the best passing big men in the league. Maybe probably, well, not on the level of a Nikola Jokic or uh, DeMontis Sabonis, but still averaged 3.9 assists, nearly four a game, shot 55.3% from the field. Showed a lot of improvement on the offensive end uh, in his sophomore season this past season. Uh, much like many of his young teammates, does need a little more work on the defensive end, but Sengun is becoming quite the offensive player. Devin Vassell of the San Antonio Spurs. Now, many people were quite surprised by the five-year, $135 million extension that Vassell signed. Um, 
you know, seen as an overpay by the Spurs, but people really don't pay attention to Spurs, uh, at least pre-Victor Wembenyama, post-Tim Duncan. Uh, but this past season, in his 38 games, averaged 18.5 points, 3.9 rebounds, 3.6 assists, while shooting career best 38.7% from deep. And I'm going to end with maybe the biggest snub, Derek White of the Boston Celtics. Very surprised he wasn't in the top 100. Uh, was mostly a starting shooting guard this past season. 12.4 points, 3.6 rebounds, 3.9 assists, but was also a member of the all-defensive second team this past season with Boston. Um, also a reliable shooter, 38.1% from three, a career high, uh, career best for white so there are 10 of the biggest snubs from and espn's nba rank there's a lot of other guys i consider they include kevin herter dylan brooks spencer dinwiddie Jaden ivy trey murphy the third jabari smith jr uh jacob Pertle, al horford markel fultz wendell carter jr alex caruso benedict matherin Jaden McDaniels, Kyle Anderson, Stephen Adams, D'Angelo Russell, Contavious Caldwell Pope, and Keldon Johnson. Let me know in the comments who you think is the biggest snub from ESPN's NBA rank. Maybe tomorrow I'll do a video where we could go over not all the names in the top 100, but at least the top of the list and give my opinion on whether I agree or disagree with it. Anyhow, don't forget to subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, subscribe, like the video, share the video, hit the bell for notifications. I'm out.